It's really good to see you again. And to begin to today's worship, uh, let's confess our faith by the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ is the only Son of all the world, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father of Time. From thence he shall come to church, the weak and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the community of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our body, and the life of the happy.
all together one more time and we're gonna we're gonna lift his name up again we're gonna bless his name we're gonna praise him we're gonna thank him for all he had done for us for saving us for forgiving our sins for giving us a new future and for always being there for us and leading us and guiding guiding us and, and blessing us and blessing our family our our children and everyone around us let's let's give thanks to him and just just lift his name up high and just just praise him and just praise him and and welcome him in this place Let, let's all pray to him father god we thank you we thank you lord jesus you are so good to us is from the second Kings chapter 18 verses 9 through 13 and chapter 20 verse 20 and if you don't have your Bible with you it's on the bulletin and today Deacon Dongu Kim and Yongho Kim Gonsa uh, Yongho Kim will read the passage for us Scripture, Second Kings, chapter eighteen, verses nine to thirteen. Chapter twenty, verse twenty. In King Hezekiah's fourth year, 
which was the seventh city of Hosea, son of Ella, king of Israel, shall make Misael, king of Assyria, marched against Samaria and laid siege to it. At the end of three years, the Assyrians took it. So Samaria was captured in Hezekiah's sixth year, which was the ninth year of... <coughs> Ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala, in Hosan, on the harbor river and in towns of the Medes. This happened because they had not obeyed the Lord their God, but had violated his covenant, or that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. They neither listened to the command nor carried them out. In the potency of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. And As for the, the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city are they now written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah. Amen. Thank you. 오늘이 너무 이름도 많이 나오고 힘든 부제로. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some of the words I will have trouble reading. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a very, very special music today. Uh, she will be singing uh, How Great Thou Art. And uh, I've, I've listened to just part of her story. Uh, and you're in Paris now? Uh, Paris is a very good place. The beginning was not a good place. The beginning was a good place. The beginning was a God has blessed her uh, in many ways. I was amazed to hear that, and uh, I hope uh, all of you uh, get inspired by her singing and be touched. And um, uh, and yeah, let's welcome her with a big hand. Thank you. 
Shoshana Choir, and they'll be singing the Lord's Choir.
Thank you for the wonderful praise. 오늘 이렇게 가사가 다 어려운지 모르겠어요. <웃음> I I didn't even know that existed in English. <웃음> 연습하느라 얼마나 고생을 하셨겠어요. Thank you, thank you. 이 코리아 has lots of mountains uh, and I, I've had chance to drive all over the country because of funerals that, that I had to attend as a parish pastor and I marveled at uh, their uh, engineering skills you know, drilling and, and boring tunnels into the mountain and it, it's 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 such a it, it made it a such a shorter drive to reach certain areas and they still bore tunnels especially like in the mountains and stuff using dynamite they'll drill holes and put diamonds di dynamite in and they'll blow it up and then they'll dig it out and then keep going in and going in and going in. But for cutting through city underground for subways, like in Seoul, they use what's called TBN. And it's nothing special. The name is just tunnel boring machine. <laughs> so simple, how simple it can it be? Tunnel boring machine. Uh, and uh, a big one, would have about seven meter diameter circular rotor in the front with many teeth in it. And it will just go around and around and it will just dig into the rock or soil or whatever. And it will have a, top, uh, a tail longer than 100 meters, sometimes 150 meters. Uh, and it will have trailers behind it like, like, a, like a train. And they're so big, they they have to be assembled at the site. You can't bring it there. It has to come in parts and you have to assemble it there and sometimes it can take uh, about a month to assemble the machine at the site. So it's a, it's a huge machine. And uh, to simply put it, it is a large factory on wheel. And as it bores through, the debris are passed toward the back through a conveyor belt. And, and as it advances, there is an automatic arm which installs concrete segment walls. You know, so as it passes through, it digs, you know, it, it, bore, it bores the tunnel and not only that, it just covers the walls with, with concrete and everything. So with just one pass, the tunnel is done. One pass and it's done. Uh, its speed will vary according to the type of the ground, but it surely beats what Hezekiah's man had to go through digging their tunnel. Hezekiah's tunnel is one of the most well-preserved architectural marvel from the ancient time. Uh, I went to Jerusalem once, and we just stayed there like one day or two days, and and I, I, you know, I cannot believe that I didn't go to uh, Hezekiah's tunnel and walk through the tunnel, but we were such in hurry. Uh, but it is still there. Uh, it is still there, as it were, as it was dug thousands of years ago, and the water still flows. So you can still walk through the tunnel, wading through the water, and you will start from the spring and walk down the path for more than 500 meters, and you will reach the pool inside the city walls, and that pool is Shiloh. Uh, 
Um, and it is safe to assume that it, it, it required tons of work uh, from so many workers. They didn't have GPS. Uh, they didn't know what direction to take. Um, so if you go down the tunnel today, and if you check it out, if you walk down the tunnel, uh, you can see that there were places where the tunnel is going to two different places. So if you're not careful, you will end up in a wrong tunnel well, where it will just end somewhere. So they made mistakes, you know. Uh, but along the way, they somehow found out that they were digging toward a wrong, wrong direction. So they came back to the correct spot and they started digging to the right direction again. So why did they do this? Why go through all this trouble, digging through rock to bring this water into the city? In today's passage, we see that when Hezekiah was still a young king at the age of 28, which was the fourth year of his reign, so he became king around 24, 25. I'm 40 something now, more than 20 years older than he was uh, when he became king. So I can't imagine the young guy having that kind of responsibility. And what he had to see as the king was that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came all the way to Samaria and he laid a siege on that city. And he captured that city after two years. So the people of Samaria starved to death for two years. Slowly people died. The king of um, Israel, who was Hosea at the time, you know, they held on for it for two years, but they couldn't go on much longer. At that time, the Assyrians didn't attack Judah, but Hezekiah knew that it was only a matter of time because Jerusalem was the only thing that was left. They conquered everything else all the way to Egypt. And Jerusalem and the, the southern Judah was all that was left, so he knew they were coming after him. Um, and Jerusalem sits on, a, uh, on top of a rocky mountain. So underneath is all rock. And it is well protected on all sides. Uh, but it didn't have enough water. And its major water source was Kion Spring in Kidron Valley outside of the city wall. So in time of siege, if the king of Assyria comes to Jerusalem to sack the city or, or lay a siege on that city, Jerusalem will not last even a week because they didn't have war. So what Hezekiah decided to do was to tap into that water source outside of the city and bring it into the city by digging a tunnel through the limestone the city was sitting on. And that's why they dug you know, that tunnel and it is, it is still there. Jesus is our living water. In our hard times, whatever they might be, we need to tap into Jesus. He will give us the strength that we need. He will protect us. He will sustain us. The Samaritan woman at the well was looking for fulfillment and happiness in all the wrong places. She had five husbands, but they didn't give her what she needed. They didn't give her the happiness or fulfillment that she was looking for. And as she kept searching for
for that happiness, things got worse. She ended up living in isolation. She couldn't even say hi to her neighbors in the village. She was so ashamed. So when Jesus met her, he said, this is what he said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, if you knew who I was, you would have asked me and I would have given you living water. People do not know. They do not know where to turn to. When they face a difficulty, we run to all the wrong places. People do not know who can fulfill them. People do not know who can help them in time of need. They do not know who holds the key, just like the Samaritan woman. Jesus is the answer. Come to Jesus. When the Samaritan woman met Jesus as the Messiah, she had a breakthrough. Something changed. On the outside, she looked the same. Everyone in the town recognized her, but she wasn't the same person anymore. Something changed. Something totally changed. She was a completely different person. Why? Because Jesus gave her the living water. Nothing changed. Nothing else changed. Her life is the same. He's, she's with the same man. Same situation. But the only thing that changed was that she met Jesus. And she got to drink that living water. She was revived. She wasn't afraid anymore. She had an unspeakable joy and peace in her that she had to go, in, go run into the town and tell people about Jesus and bring them to Jesus because she wanted them to drink the living water as well. So why do we not come to Jesus in our difficult times? Why do we not pray? Well, because it is difficult. It is difficult to dig through the rock and get to that spring, to bring that water into your life. It is difficult to pray. We would rather try something else. We would rather talk to someone else and ask for help from someone else. All those things look much easier than coming to God and praying. So we go through five husbands. Figurative. Figurative. And not just five husbands, one more. And he's not even a husband. When Jesus was admonishing his disciples not to give up, when they prayed, Jesus said this, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? If you pray, if you do not give up, God will answer you. Amen. And God will help you, but... When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We do not dig the tunnel like Hezekiah. Or if we have started, we give up after a few days because we lack faith in God. We do not hope in our Lord. Just, has a, just the way Hezekiah had hope. In God. Hezekiah believed that God will protect them from the Assyrian army when they come and surround the city to swallow them up. He believed that God will somehow deliver them 
from the hands of the Assyrian people. They needed to, to somehow survive until that time. The time will come and the enemy will come and they will surround us and they will harass us. But God will come too. And God will deliver us. But until then, we need to hold on. That's why he dug that tunnel and brought that water into the city. They needed to do their best to last long enough to see God's deliverance. Hezekiah didn't give up. From the world's point of view, there really was no hope. The Assyrian Empire was the biggest empire, the strongest nation on earth. They conquered everything. And Judah was such a small country, and Jerusalem was a, such a small city, very weak. It was a miracle that Judah lasted that long. And there was no one left. Hezekiah and all Judah could rely on no one else. They, they couldn't turn to anyone else because no one else was left. But they had faith in God. Hezekiah had faith in God. Every time the Assyrians came to harass the people of Jerusalem, you know, they'll send, the king will send, um, you know, one of his army general or he will send his letter and, you know, make, make the, the messenger read the, the letter uh, and, and speak to everyone uh, in their language so everyone will, will hear it. Um, but every time that, that harassment came, Hezekiah turned to the Lord and cried out to God for help. Every time, so every time he did that, every time God gave him an assurance through Isaiah that he will protect Hezekiah in Jerusalem, that God will drag the Assyrian king back to his country and let him die there. Our lives are not difficult because of the difficulties that we face. We are not heartbroken because of the people who give us hard time. We are about to collapse because our tunnel to the living water is blocked. I'm exhausted. I don't know what to do. I have no hope. Not because of the difficulties outside, but because I don't get the living one. 나를 힘들게 하는 사람 때문에 내가 힘든 게 아니에요. 날 미워하고 나를 아주 못 살게 보는 사람 때문에 내가 힘든 게 아니에요. 이 예수님께서 주시는 이 리빙 워러를 못 마셔서 힘든 거예요. We need to clear the way. We need to make our way through no matter how difficult it is, because that is the only way we could survive. That is our hope, that is our only hope. Hezekiah could try rebuilding the city wall. Hezekiah could try buying more horses or, or training more people. But what good are they without water? 그거 다 하면 뭐 하겠어요? 성을 아무리 잘 쌓아놓고 더 많은 뭐 말을 들여오고 군사들을 더 많이 준비하고 그걸 뭐 하겠어요? 물이 없네.
without the water, we will not last long. But with the water, we could overcome anything. Dig your tunnel to God. Keep going. Do not give up. Persevere. God is not trying to keep you away from the water. God wants to give it to you. Dyslexia is a learning disability caused by neurological disorder where people have trouble recognizing the letters and, and the sound. Uh, and they have trouble connecting the letters into words and into sentences and into paragraphs. So despite their intelligence, people with dyslexia would have really difficult time reading. So in this modern age where reading is of the first importance in getting a good education and doing well in life, it is not hard to imagine what a child has to go through to cope with and overcome this disability. And people or, or even the parents are telling them, you're so lazy. So many dyslexic people end up with severe depression or in jail. However, at the same time, many dyslexic people excel in other areas. In, and in many cases, as a direct consequence of having dyslexia. Dyslexia ga isoso, kamok kana saram do ikku. Kugi isoso, to tiyonan saram do tenen saram duri itaran. One student with dyslexia would go and talk to his teachers at the end of each semester to explain his situation, to explain his sickness and to negotiate better grades. So he will go talk to the teacher and turn a D into C. The next semester, he will go in again and he will turn that C into B or B plus. And he did that throughout his middle school years and high school years and college years. So after he graduated college, he was an expert in negotiation. <laughs> 너무 많이 해본 거예요. 어렸을 때부터. 그것도 교수들을 상대로 주물러가지고. 그냥. And here are some of the people who are known to have dyslexia. Tom Cruise. 새 영화가 나왔어요. Jennifer Aniston. Pablo Picasso, this is the Picasso that we know. Leonardo da Vinci. Gary Cohn, Gary Cohn is, um, he's the CEO or, or COO of uh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Current COO or CEO. Charles Schwab. Tesla. Alexander Bell. Thomas Edison. Albert Einstein. 똑똑한 사람이 여기 다 들고 있네요. <웃음> And they had trouble reading. 우리도 하는데. 우리 집사님들도 오늘 어려운 거를 읽으셨는데. 한국 사람도 하는데 미국 사람들이 못 읽는다. But they overcame that. Not only overcame that, that propelled them to excel in other areas. The difficulties that you are facing in your life, or this one thing that wouldn't go away, no matter how much you pray, that one thing is really helping you to seek the living water. 그 나쁜 게 나쁜 게 아니라 그 나쁜 것 때문에 예수님 찾게 해주는 거예요. 
하나님 찾게 해주는 거예요. I don't know what mountain you are facing. I don't know what you have to dig through. But God is not hindering you from reaching Him. Rather, those difficulties and obstacles will guide you through to the living one. And if you, um, the Hezekiah's men, when they were digging through the tunnel, they were digging from both sides to shorten the time that, that was needed to, to complete the tunnel. Because they were really, they didn't know when, when this Assyrian king will, will come and attack them. Uh, so it's, it's amazing. It, it still baffles scholars how they were able to meet up at one point. Near the entrance to the tunnel, near the pool of Shiloh, there is an inscription describing that moment when both sides finally met up with each other. When there was about one or two meters left to dig through, they could hear, you know, the other side, you know, banging and, 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 and you know, just cutting into the rock. And, and, and they started calling each other. Hey, brother, I'm, I'm coming. Is that you? And, you know, and and this is the, the, what the inscription says. And on the final day of tunneling, each of the stone cutters was striking forcefully so as to meet his co-worker, peak after peak. And then the water began to flow from the source to the pool. It was a day of pure joy. I need to tell you that you are not alone as you are digging the tunnel to reach out to God. As you are digging your tunnel to the spring of living water, you are not alone. God is not just sitting there waiting for you to come. God is digging on the other side. He is coming towards you and He has come so much closer to you. Keep digging. Keep praying to God. God wants you to come. God wants to meet you and give you that living water. God wants to refresh you, give you the strength that you need, give the wisdom that you need, give the miracle that you need. Amen. Keep on praying. You are not that far away. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the encouraging word today. We ask that you will give us more faith so that we will not give up digging our tunnel to the living one. Whenever we need something, whenever we are in despair, whenever we need some help, Lord, draw us nearer to you. Help us to dig deeper into you and, and approach you and come to you and pray to you and receive your help and drink from the living water. Let us be like the Samaritan woman. That even when nothing has changed, that we will have a renewed strength that we would have a different attitude toward life, that everything will change, and that we will live a much fulfilling life to glorify you. 
We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for coming toward us and digging the, the tunnel on the other side. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. gifts. Lord, please receive them and use them for your glory. And we pray that you will continue to be with us with our lives and continue to bless our family, our workplaces, our businesses, our children. Especially, Lord, we pray for the young people in the English worship service, that you will give them hope, that they will be able to reach out to you, Lord, that they will be able to complete their tunnel to the living water. So they'll have the living water inside of them and give them hope, give them peace, give them fulfillment in their life, and give them direction, give them wisdom that they need. Lord, we thank you for being there for us, watching over us and leading us and guide us and, and helping us every step of the way. Lord, we Give all the glory to you for all you've done for us, to save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming and worshiping with us. Uh, if you're a newcomer, if it is your first time or if you're just visiting, uh, please come forward when we sing the closing song. I'd like to welcome you personally and share a small gift that we prepare for you. Uh, and for the next two weeks, our church is having uh, mountain retreats at Wonju Retreat Center. And we strongly encourage you to join this amazing gathering and, and make a breakthrough to the living water. 오늘 설교를 왜 그걸 했겠어요? So don't give up, 
come up to the mountain, God will do great things for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's all stand for the closing song. Let's greet someone next to us and say, God bless you. And stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Thank you so much for coming today, especially today. The weather is so hot. I'm just walking from my office to here and I'm sweating. It's like a couple minutes walk. So thank you all for coming and, and worshiping with us. Um, but, you know, I, I am very grateful that at least the air is very clean. So, don't worry. 포도션 때문에 너무 문제가 많았는데 이게 중국 쪽에서 안 불어와서 너무 감사해요. So um, stay stay cool 아프지 마시고 뭐 더위 먹는다 그러네 더위 먹지 마시고 I don't know how to say that in English 더위 먹. Okay, let's give a big hand to our Shoshana Choir. Thank you, and the orchestra, and also our Taylor Praise team. Thank you. Oh, and our uh, keyboardist, we Dongguk. We, 성경을 읽으신 분도 동국이시고요. They just had a, a son, first son. 오늘 처음 나왔어요. Our newest member. Welcome, welcome. I talk in the money. Let me go shake his hand. <laughs> we need to understand. Congratulations. Thank you, Domi. Chiyuri? Chiyuri. All right, Band of Love. Jesus Christ, and the amazing love of the Father, the leading and guiding and empowering of the Holy Spirit be with you all from this moment till forever. Amen. Amen.